So for our last segment before the Q&A, what we're going to do is we are going to add some prefabs, and this is going to be our use case for a custom brush, right? So, so far we've been doing everything with the default brush, which just places tiles on the grid, but we can actually change brushes, and there's a number of brushes. I'll just show you really quickly. Here's the line brush. Uh, if we uh, take the I'll – do, I'll just do something out in space here. You can click once. Click again, right? And so you can do stuff like this. Make things even faster for yourself if you want to. Whoop. Um, as an example, you know, a simple kind of uh, – simple custom brush. But the brush we're going to use is the gem brush. And what this gem brush does is it is going to – we'll see down here that it has – uh, a list of prefabs, right? We could randomize this if we wanted to. If we had multiple prefabs, it'll select a random one. We just have this collectible gem, which is a 3D object, right? Not a 2D object. It's just a regular Unity prefab. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the prefab brush to paint it on aligned with the grid. So we're going to go ahead and make another tile map. Now, importantly, I can turn off the tile map and the tile map renderer because we're really just using this as a kind of a grid child object. And so I'm going to zoom in. I've got my gem brush selected. And now all I need to do is click and drag. And I can add 3D objects to my scene. Lots of them, apparently. Now, importantly, I cannot modify these I can kind of shift click drag to get rid of them, but once they're spawned, these are game objects now, right? They're ch child objects of the tile map, but we're basically just using the kind of one shot behavior of the gem brush to spawn these objects into the scene. And then now they're just a regular Unity game object, which is a child of this object here. We're basically using the brush and the grid to align and place them, right? And if we want to switch into 3D space briefly and look, we can actually see that these are actual 3D meshes. And we can do some fun stuff for the sorting because we can see they're currently sorting in front of the waterfalls. What I'm going to do, switch back to 2D, I'm going to take all of the waterfalls and I'm just going to do a little Z-axis trickery just by pulling them forward on the Z axis, Z or Z axis. And then I'm going to pull my, oh, I didn't rename this. This should be gems. I'm going to pull my gems a little bit forward as well. And then we can see it's going to look like this. And this is just going to allow us to sort, right? Because if you actually under the hood, Unity is using the 3D engine to do all the 2D stuff. It's just rendering it with an orthographic camera. Uh, which flattens out the perspective. So you can actually use some 3D stuff in your 2D games if you want to. And in this case, this allows us to sort the transparent waterfall in front of the uh, 3D gems. It's a little, little trick for you there. And now, if we enter play mode, we can pick up all these things and have lots of fun. Wah, wah, wah. Um, can't reach it. So I hope that you uh, enjoyed learning about tile maps, tiles, brushes, and Cinemachine 2D with me today. Um, I appreciate your coming out. Thanks for watching.